Sway in the morning. Shave for five. When I think of this guy, man, we he's been here so many times. I've done so many intros. I damn near just want to say, hey, it's a new f- our family yeah. member is back. Welcome back to the family reunion here. Right. Um, but from the first time I saw him in Ghost, uh, the Last Samurai, did you? Mm-hmm. The Last Samurai. Uh, DB, you want to name a few that he's done that you like? Well, we were talking this morning, and I was just like, I, you're one of my favorite actors who plays either bad guys, jerks, or assholes. Like, you, yeah. your, <laughs> your character, <laughs> it's almost like every movie I watch, like, damn, you're good. I was just telling you, I was watching the Belko uh, experiment last night, and I'm like, wow, he's a good guy. And then towards the end of the film, like, nope, he's a jerk nope. again. <laughs> yeah. 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 Killing yeah. people, yeah. no no, no disregard for, yeah. for human life. Make but, a living, you know? Yeah, but they also in Scandal, man, that's when we really all uh, we fell in love with him and would have him here all the time yes. um, because yeah. of all the love scenes with all the beautiful women he got to, got, got to do. We admired him. Yeah. Especially the uh, black women. Yeah, especially the black women, right? Uh, he became a, a hero in the black community. Um, and he's back with us to, to, again today. He's doing Broadway. He's doing a, nice. a sought-after ticket for Network. That's the one he's in. The one and only Tony Goldwyn is here. Yay! Thanks, guys. Oh Man, so happy to be back. It's always Man. so fun to see you. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm, yeah. I was telling folks yesterday, I was telling Tony I was um, doing a rehearsal over at MTV, and I was like, damn, man, we got to wrap this up. And I was like, what do you mean? This shit, the show launches next week. And I was like, yeah, but Tony Goldwyn is coming by the show. Everybody was like, Tony Goldwyn? Uh-huh. I was like, yeah, that's my man. I could call him right now. I fake like I was going to call you. And then uh, <laughs> I had tickets, but I wasn't able to make it because we couldn't get out. Uh, in time, but yeah. I, I got to see you on Broadway. Yeah, it's a really cool show. This play that I'm doing mm-hmm. yeah. with uh, Brian Cranston, Breaking oh. Bad fans know you know Brian, and uh, he's brilliant. It's based on um, a, a film that was made in 1976 called Network. Yeah, uh, that was a you know it's like a iconic movie, and it was a, at that time it was like a satire of media and mm-hmm. where television was headed, and uh, and and particularly the news business, and and um, it was completely prophetic about yeah. what actually happened mm-hmm. um you know at the time there were only three networks and there were you know three white dudes giving you the news every night mm-hmm. and this sort of you know this great writer Petty Chayefsky wrote this satire of what would happen predicting fox news and sort mm-hmm. of shock jock journalism and reality tv <clears throat> and um it all has come to pass and and more with what mm-hmm. we're going through now so um this brilliant director named Ivo van Hove is a European director ca- came up with this idea of, of redoing it and we do it it's multimedia we have okay. cameras on stage with us we yeah. do a scene um, outside in the street live that then comes on stage so television is a big part of it. it's really oh, wow. looking at where what's happened with our media culture and how you know what's real what's not what's the truth right. what's not the truth mm-hmm. in uh-huh. the sort of Trump era uh-huh. of you know harnessing anger as a as a commodity yeah you know what i mean like yeah. tapping into people's justifiable rage with their condition but harnessing that to to make money and and get eyeballs yeah. on, the, yeah. on the television fuel set a machine. Yeah. fuel yeah. a machine yeah. yeah that's what it's about so it's it's super cool and and groundbreaking so i'm if people want to, it's, it's a really unusual theatrical experience. So I feel really, really lucky to be part of it. Does it make you? Uh, you play Matt Max Schumacher, right? Mm-hmm, right. I'm the head of the news division at this network. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've worked uh, for a news department for uh, nearly 16, 17 years. Um, and then I had to push out, pull out of it um, because of what I saw. Some of the things I saw that takes place behind the curtain. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn about? news and how and how it's distributed does it make it hard for you to even watch tv now that you're doing this i find it really tough you know i i've really given what's happened in the past 10 years with television news for me it's become so tribal yeah you know whether you Mm. watch if i watch cnn i get one perspective if i watch msnbc i get one perspective if i watch fox news which is hard for me (laughs) because of my perspective you know that's one Thing. And so, so uh, it's it, it, it's I, I you know I end up we've gone back to really reading newspapers and reading multiple newspapers because I can't quite trust that one outlet is going to give me a balanced view right. of the world. It's, yeah. it's all you know even the New York Times, which is a really you know uh, legit mm-hmm. publication. I find even their headlines have a point of view. I'm like, yep. wait a minute, <laughs> I read the story, but the headline. Is spinning the story. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, yeah. uh, and, and so sort of tabloid journalism has infected. You know, one of our cast members, Ron Canada. Do you know the actor Ron Canada? He's a great actor who 
is he started out as a news anchor okay in the 70s at this time and Uh he got out of the news business because even at that time he felt what was happening maybe what what drove you out you know he was just like this is the way he referred to it he said news is an angry business it Mm. is man and um cutthroat angry yeah right but don't you see it as like supply and demand like i look at it as more we're the issue a hundred percent because you know someone like a New York Times or whatever other type of publication that is trying to stay afloat. That's right. You know what I mean. And it's it's we, it, this is you know it's it's um we're the consumers are driving it. Exactly. You know it's sort of like saying, where's the you know in terms of the drug epidemic, where is it chicken or is it it's the egg? egg. Right, right, right. People stop doing drugs. Does that kill? Well, no, because the suppliers are constantly finding new drugs to mm. tempt people. Yeah. And um, I think that's you know we've that's sort of true. it's on steroids with with news consumption because so, so like what I find fascinating is in the fifties and into the sixties, right when radio and television news sort of first happened, news departments were not expected to make money. They were there was a whole thing about uh-huh. you know, providing a public service. If there was something that was huh. in the public interest, then 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 that the news was about providing ba- supposedly balanced information. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. and like William Paley, who was the head of CBS and was sort of the great visionary, he said, "Look, I don't need news division to make money because I have Jack Benny, who was a famous comedian, you know, to uh-huh. make the money. The entertainers made the money, and the news was was uh, would lose money. Yeah, um, that all changed in the seventies when." Um, there became, you know, like 60 Minutes started making, getting big Bits, ratings. Yeah. Right. And people realized, and corporatization yeah. of, of of television realized they could make money off of, of news. Mm-hmm. And then news as entertainment, and for, it kind of just took off. And then by the 90s, yeah. you had, you know. Um, yeah. uh, Dateline, yeah, 2020. Yeah, the anchors you know, like, become yeah. famous. The if broadcast you remember journalists. Morton Downey Jr., Martin who was Downey. like that oh. anger Barbara thing. Walters. You know, yeah. Yeah. Barbara Walters yeah. became, you know, entertainment, who was yeah. legit, but yeah. it was much more... So in it, and uh, then you had Jerry you know, Springer, Jerry Springer, and then on the radio, <laughs> Jenny Rush, Jones, Jenny Jones, and on radio, Rush yeah. Limbaugh, you know, who like yeah. was you know, incredibly wow. entertaining, yeah. and and uh, and now it's it's uh, then with this with social media and with Facebook and YouTube yeah. and all of the you know social media uh, outlets, it's gone. It's gone. It's, it's gone haywire. It's gone crazy, uh, yeah. t- Tony Goldwyn is here. Um, he's on a new uh, Broadway play network. It's at the uh, Belasco Theater. That's right. Through June eighth, it was actually extended, wasn't it? Yeah, we extended it twice. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Been, uh, yes. thing, okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but Brian and people who watched, um, uh, uh, I don't know, Tatiana Maslany is uh-huh. also in it. Uh-huh. Who, uh huh. Who is who's in this the television series Orphan Black? She won an Emmy for that. I don't know if you guys have had a wow. Tatiana mm. no. over. Uh-huh. She's she's awesome. You guys should have her on. She's a great great. Uh, we can, great can you hook actress. us up? Yeah. Yeah, man. Tony, hook us up, man. Yeah. All right. We still friends, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, still go, cool, right, Tony? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because I was telling everybody that I was, I, wouldn't it be nice if Tony invited us over to his house or something? And, that's right. You're you know, let's have a party. Yeah, you know. I right? love it. Come on, man. You be cooking, Tony? What you be doing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, let's do it. Yeah, I like cook. I wouldn't take pictures of the, you know, pictures on the wall and post or nothing like that. Like, I wouldn't videotape if I'm in your home. I'm okay. Like, okay, cool. See, Heather? Tony's cool. <laughs> We're going to we Tony Goldwyn's house. Yeah. I have a question, though. But we have so many comedians that come here that are super successful in film and television. And for you, being a successful actor in film and television, um, like the comedians, they just go and do like random shows, like just in clubs and walk up and they say it's to keep their skills sharp. Mm. They'll run into a comedy club, a yeah. local spot and try out material. Does Broadway sort of work the way for actors? Like, you know, why do you go do Broadway when you... It does for me. I mean, that's where I started. I, I st- When I started as an actor, I started working in the theater and that was my first oh, kind of okay. what made me passionate about it uh and it's um it's how can it, it, i think it, the similarity is i mean you can't just sort of drop into a theater, theater and yeah, go you on can't, stage you but the but it definitely keeps your skills sharp uh performing for a live audience you know you have this really exciting relationship and also a lot of times the material that you work on is more um uh, you know, m- often more complex and more literary than what you might mm-hmm. do just in a very realistic, naturalistic television show where, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> so it requires more um, more chops, you know, more more skill. It really... Uh, Broadway uh, um, requires more skill. Yeah, I mean, and also you have to, you kind of use more of yourself because you're telling a story to a thousand people. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? As opposed right. to just kind of so like... So Broadway a, is bigger? It's bigger and it requires certain but, technical skills, you yeah. know, that you don't necessarily need to work in front of a camera, which is right here. And I can be real intimate and just be myself, you know, okay. talking to you if, I'm, if we're doing a scene on camera. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I'm trying to communicate something 
for real mm -hmm. to a thousand people. You got to put more hands on it. it. I don't know. It just requires a kind of energy level and Presence. to keep it real and not be kind of phony. <laughs> and yet it's projecting that story to all these people and sometimes mm -hmm. with very complicated language or very sophisticated ideas. You know, mm -hmm. so it, it definitely is. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, well, hold it's on, a let's, challenge. Let's demonstrate. Like, give, give them the newspaper real quick and, and see how would you do a line <laughs> differently <laughs> yeah, on TV than ah. you would on Broadway. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about these uh, Alabama prisons with oh, all the raping and the drugs man. going on. Oh, okay, man. okay. So That's then, a dramatic story. Okay, so how would you believe that? Oh, wow. You, how would you read that on TV? If, if okay. You, you're talking well, about, well, look at Heather, Heather Light. She's Bellamy I'm Young. I'm just looking at that headline. <laughs> all right. <laughs> if people, have you guys already been talking about that this morning? Well, was, well I this love story? the newspapers. Yeah, this what, is what's crazy. the story? Crazy. It's oh, yeah. crazy. Okay, so it's this story about the federal prison. Prisons. In, in uh, you know, the, there was a study done, started on the Obama administration, and now has been completed in the Trump administration, <clears throat> of valuing the, the prison system in Alabama, okay. which is just rife with rape and murder and suicide Trust and everything. understaffed. And it's the headline is feds, he, feds find hell in Alabama prisons. Mm -hmm. So if I'm on if television, so here we go. So this is, no. we're, in, we're in a movie, so I'm going, here we go. Feds find hell in Alabama prisons. Are you serious? I'm serious. So... The Justice Department says that murder, rape, drug trade are regarded as normal in the Alabama prison system. I'm just going to be the first paragraph. All right. So uh, prison inmates in Alabama are routinely subjected to horrifying violence and sexual abuse within a broken system where people are murdered on a regular basis, according to a Justice Department review. Okay, so that okay, so that was the that was the intimate sort of okay. camera. So if I'm good. doing that, you in Broadway? Didn't now. they? Didn't you feel that? I was yeah, yeah, in, bro. Yeah, then I, I wanted to hear so more. We're doing Broadway, yeah. so I'm doing it for like an audience, yeah, okay. a big audience. Okay. I can't do that. So okay, so they'd be like, do? "What? What did he say?" Okay, huh? so, go, so give me Broadway. Give me Broadway. So now I'm saying, the Justice Department it says that murder, rape, drug trade are regarded as normal. Mm. Prison inmates in Alabama are routinely subjected to horrifying violence and sexual abuse within a broken system where people are murdered on a regular basis according to a Justice Department view. So you see what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, man. Yeah, got it. It's like, I, so I, I put weird applauding that, that was story. As, yeah, yeah. That was as for real. <laughs> okay. You know that what I mean? Murder. I don't, don't want to yeah. applaud the story because it's a real equally, story. Equally yeah. for real. Yeah. yeah. But I have to do it in a way that's like going to gonna not be you know i'm where i'm not acting i'm it yeah. but i'm You're telling the thing though, but it's too. it's gonna someone who's over yeah. out there is gonna get it yeah uh -huh. so you just have to it's a different wow. tony go so cool yeah. yeah. when it's here we did that was that just totally yeah. weird people yeah. like what the yeah. heck yeah. is what he you're teaching doing? us what yeah. you do yeah, yeah. yeah. that was good 888-742-3345 you want to talk with tony go and give us a call yeah yeah, Tony Goldwyn. Tony, you sing, right? Sing? Yeah, do you sing? I do. Yeah. I have. You don't sing in this role, though, huh? No, I do not sing in this role. Oh, no, I sing. Oh. I did a musical on Broadway a few years ago, yeah. Which one was it? It was called Promises, Promises. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I did that right before Scandal, actually. Right mm -hmm. before Scandal. Tony Goldwyn, man. Well, you see this, Heather, man? This dude is all around. Multi faceted. Do you have any rituals before you go on stage? Because, you know, Broadway is so scary. I would imagine you have to get your mind in a good space. Yeah. For me, I, I do the same thing when I'm working on film. Okay. Um, I, I, I sleep. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I take like... Uh, I. I guess you could call it sort of like meditation, but mm. sometimes it's meditation, but a lot of times I just have to shut down my brain yeah, uh, and get in a space where there's not all that noise of like, uh, you know how I, 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 for me, I find I have a real noisy brain. Okay. Many, so yeah, if I'm distracted mind. and there's a part of my brain that's going, is, that's quite judgy, you know what I mean? It's like, mm. well, no, that's not good. Well, this is good. So I need yeah. to shut that stuff down in order to just be chill and be present and be able to kind of, be with what's happening. That, that's kind of what I what I do. Mm -hmm. you, you don't ever. And sometimes it works. It, sometimes <laughs> it doesn't. But do you ever? Because Broadway is no is no. Um, you can't do a take two. You know that's what right. I mean? You know. Do Do wow. you ever worry about forgetting lines? Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Yeah. It's ha uh, I do. So I. I uh, yeah. It's all about concentration. You know. So I gotta. I gotta. I kind of go over. Usually, what I. What you know. My. 
performance and kind of go over um kind of get the the lines in my head and the mm-hmm. bigger speeches or stuff that I have to make sure I'm I'm kind of dialed in because what's happened to me in the past knock on wood it hasn't happened yet in this show although okay. I'm sure it will before we're done I've um in longer runs of shows that I've done I'd be performing somewhere for three or four months and be in the middle of a scene and all of a sudden go blank mm. and it's the worst it's it's um it, it like <laughs> You feel like you're falling off a cliff. Yeah. But suddenly, and sometimes it's because you discover something new uh-huh. in the scene. You're like, oh, I never <laughs> noticed that before. That was really interesting. Mm-hmm. But your brain's like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a part and of the routine. Right, exactly. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you forget like what's supposed to be coming out of my mouth. I had a, about, oh God, over 10 years ago, uh, I, I was doing a play with um, on Broadway with Laura Linney, you know, the wonderful yeah. actress Laura. And, and um, Laura, and uh I was doing a scene, and I'd, we'd been running this thing for three months, and it was super fast-paced, like 1930s comedy. And um, I was in a, I mean, I was in a tuxedo, like white tie and tails. This it was this period thing, and I this this, and in the middle of the scene, all of a sudden, uh, that happened. And I was in the middle of this speech, and I was talking very fast, blah, 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 you know, and um, <laughs> and and I just went blank. Mm. And the actor who was opposite me looked at me like, "Dude, you're in trouble." Oh. <laughs> He, he said that? He, no, no, no. He just gave me a like, look like, 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 man. You're, you're your own dog. And, and I just, like, I looked at him and, like, kind of helped me. Help. Yeah. And somehow, I don't know how, it probably only lasted for two seconds. Yeah. But it, yeah. He looked at me like, I got you. And somehow we got back on track. And I don't think the audience even noticed. Yeah. But I broke out into a sweat. <laughs> About 10 seconds later, <laughs> I started, I went beet red and I started, I went into, a, you know, what we call a flop sweat. Uh-huh. And, it, and my, my body had this physical panic reaction and the character, my character was on stage for the next half hour. I didn't leave oh the stage and people gosh. made entrances and exits and I was staying on stage and I was like, boy, sweat. <laughs> my, my tuxedo was soaked and I got through it. Mm-hmm. I come off stage for the intermission and there's paramedics there. Oh. Oh. They had called an ambulance because they were like, the, that's it. They, people would come and do a scene, but then they'd go off stage and go, something's wrong with Tony. He's, he's having a heart attack or a stroke. So I come up and there are these paramedics there. Come on, just lie down. Just sit. Just have a, no, I'm fine. I just had a flashback. I lost the line, dog. Yeah. Yo, Yo, man, it's Tony, pre- it's go pretty with stressful. Yo, that's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. Hey man, listen. Before you go, man, we came up with something that's really interesting, and it reco- <laughs> and it's uh, it's it's determined by your memory actually of your life. Uh, so hopefully you won't forget this time. On stage. I'm getting old, dude. Right. I don't know. I might not remember. All right, we call this one knowledge of self. Why don't you remind our audience who you are and what you do? Pop quiz, hot shot. It's now time for knowledge of self. self, 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 self. I'm Sway in the morning. You don't know shit. So here's what happens. I pulled some clips of movies that you've starred in, lines that you said, mm-hmm. and you have to guess what movie they were from. These are all films, not TV, okay? First one. You admit the sign did say Camp Forest Green with an arrow pointing this way. <laughs> you know that one? Oh, that, yeah, my proudest moment. Friday the 13th, part six. Jason yes. Lynn. Yes. Dude, that's when you really broke yeah. out on the scene right there. That right? was my very first movie. I died in the first two minutes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at you now. <laughs> All right, let's hear the second clip. In the next two weeks, if you do anything that makes me look bad, I'll break you in half. Mm. Oh. Call the paramedics. <laughs> I have yeah, call the paramedics. <laughs> <laughs> I have no you idea what that's cop. from. Cuffs. Yep. Oh, my God. With Christian yeah. Slater. That's yeah. right with Christian Slater. That was... That right. was a long time ago. Clip yeah. number three. <laughs> As I told you people before, the president is just here for his annual checkup. The Pelican Brief. Correct. Right. Great movie. Number four. Awesome. Sorry. Well, the machine forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Call the tech. <laughs> Naomi, let's hear something triumphal. Something worthy of rebirth. Uh, the sixth day? No. What? You were underground. I was underground? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Why are you looking at Heather? She can't. <laughs> Kiss the girls. Flop sweat. Kiss the girls, right. Mm. 
Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Let's I hear put, the next one. Was <laughs> next and final one. one. You have absolutely no reason to kill me. I didn't do anything to you. It was all him. Uh, uh, the sixth day. Yeah, yeah. exactly. With Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Robert Duvall. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Did you vote for him, Arnold, when you ran for governor? <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> I, 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 I was actually not a California resident. There but, we go. Uh, uh, so right, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get. Uh, okay, good. I don't want Arnold. I don't want Arnold coming after me when I see him at the gym. <laughs> no you know what problem. I'm saying? Right, right. Still at like goals, working out too. <laughs> all right, Tony Goldwyn, ladies and gentlemen, give him yeah. a round of applause. Nice. Take him out woo, 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 as woo. Matt Schumacher on Broadway. Yeah. Um, in the Play Network, it's a big one. People can't get tickets for this one. And Can also, we? I'll queue up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. All yeah. right. All right. He's also going to be in Chambers, a Netflix movie, which is coming out later this month. Yeah, Netflix series coming out this month. Yeah, it's really cool. And we have your co-star Uma Thurman coming up soon. Oh, good. So I don't know I if you have any uh, oh, interesting oh, yeah, tidbits. Yeah. Well, Uma's is great. We, we had a blast doing this. It's a really cool, really cool show. Okay. She's yeah. going to be here. Mm-hmm. You've worked with her. You know her. Ask her a question that we wouldn't know to make her answer. What would it be? If I were to ask, ask her a question. So we'll play it back for her when she comes to the studio. You mean I should ask her a question? You ask question. her a question, yeah. Hey, Uma. Blah, 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 Tony. Blah. Okay. Okay, good luck, man. Uh, That's what we do every day, oh, Tony. You guys, oh, <laughs> you guys flop sweat. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I, I, I got to ask her a question. She won't get mad at me. Okay. Um, uh, well, I would say, Uma, uh, can you tell us about your incredibly talented daughter? Um, and how it feels to uh, be an actress uh, as accomplished as you are mm -hmm. to have a, a kid who's just killing it. Because I don't know if you guys are going to ask her about that, but um, we are now, Tony. Yeah, her daughter <laughs> Maya is really amazing. Okay, Tony Goldwyn. All right, Tony! thank you, brother. Turn the count, black.